This is the sixth dialogue between J. Krishnamurti and David Boehm at Brockwood Park, 1975. One question is, we were discussing last week... Uh, the question that truth does not make uh, any contact with reality, right? Yeah. And uh, now, that, no, I think we should perhaps clear that up a bit. Uh, one point is that if, uh, since reality is thought and the activity of thought, that if uh, if thought ceases, that would suggest that reality ceases. If thought, ah. uh, in other words, we, uh, that is not clear. I was saying to somebody the other day, in London, when I went to the dentist, he asked me what we were talking about. Oh. I said about reality and truth. He said, he said what is reality? I said, they had everything in which included the activity of thought. He said, and truth is nothing to do with that. He said, that seems so so obvious. Uh -huh. I, and they said, why do philosophers make so much fuss about uh -huh. it? If, if reality is the activity of thought and with the cessation of thought will truth be apparent will truth appear I don't think so, quite. No. <laughs> First of all, can thought be stopped or put an end to or naturally cease? And can thought be stopped through various media, through various systems and so on, so on, so on. And we're asking if, if that takes place, can truth be, can truth exist? Yes, truth be actual, Mr. Hmm? Can truth be actual? Truth be? Will truth be actual? Then? Actual, yes, truth be actual. For the moment, mm -hmm. I don't think it, it happens that way. Well, let's examine going to it. Thought is so cunning, it can mesmerize itself or hypnotize itself and think it is very quiet. That's one point. And our various systems, including Zen and the Hindu forms of quieting thought, I 
and control <coughs> is still not ending thought. Because one thought superimposes on the other and so on. <coughs> Can then thought ever be silent? If it is not through meditation, in the ordinary accepted sense of that word, if it is not through any system, if it is not in if it has not induced itself very subtly to be silent. And if none of these or can bring about a a real silence of the mind. And if there is something that can silence the mind, then is truth actual? No. I think something else has to take place. That's the end. Yeah, that's for good. What do you? Well, that's uh, tried another. Uh question, you see, uh, if uh, if I recall, we also said, you know, that uh, we made a distinction, say, between a a thought which uh, is inherently, by its nature, twisted, and the, you know, the ability to make a mistake. And which correct it and make correct it, so. it, which is due to wrong information. Yes, 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 yes. All right, but you see, uh, perhaps also this, uh, if we clarified this a little further, we went into it further. Uh, see, sometimes it's not clear the distinction between, say, a simple mistake and the kind of confusion oh, that, yes. that thought gets into, right? <laughs> uh, because, well, let's say that somebody does something foolish, you see, and he may not know exactly why he does it, and uh, perhaps eventually he sees it, and he ceases to do it. I mean, uh, something out of ignorance. Not necessarily ignorance, but just simply um, unawareness, you see. Uh, yes, unawareness. And then one wonders, what is the source of the unawareness? You see, there, as I say, there are two kinds of unawareness. Some simple failure to be aware, perhaps, I don't know how to put it, and another unawareness, which is due to thought, which is has a systematic tendency to suppress awareness. Right? In other words, yes. part of the, the ignorance of thought is not merely a lack of knowledge, but it's ignoring. It ignores uh, in order to be more comfortable, in order to uh-huh. have right. more pleasure, right. Right? Right. more security. It, it wants to remain in its own stable. <laughs> yes, right. it doesn't want to disturb the equilibrium of its operation, yes, because yes. it's frightened that if it does, yes. everything will go to pieces. pieces. That's right. Now, and therefore, that kind of ignorance is thought positively ignoring. Quite. And there's another kind of ignorance which is negative, which is, in the simplest case, lack of information. But then it may sometimes seem rather hard to, you know, to distinguish if, if somebody does something foolish, whether it's due to the thought ignoring, or whether it's due to further lack of information of a subtle nature. Right. Uh, Are we trying to find out <coughs> where truth can ever make a mistake? Yes, in a way. Uh, in other words, is there some other than l- lack of information, of course. See, in other words, I said last time something like the computer given wrong information, wrong information. gives the wrong answer, that's necessary. Of course. And now, if you were to take the analogy of the computer a little further, you could say that some things might begin to go wrong with the computer and would give wrong answers for a different reason. For a different, quite. And that's the sort of question we're into, you see. Yes. So what is it we are asking, sir? Well, I think, uh, you see, it, it becomes see, a little ambiguous. <coughs> uh, see, if one could be clear to say, uh, you see, that, see, it seems truth uh, could not uh, 
become involved in any form of um, deception. Yes. Yeah. Truth cannot deceive itself. No. Me. Yes. Obviously not. Yes. And that, that would have to be thought. Now, is it possible, say, in, in your case, for example, that thought would uh, go on for a certain period of time and, and then you would uh, see something, you know, would have, uh, see it and, and would end? Or I mean, I'm just trying to find out. Or is it instantly? Or so I think we have to consider, don't we? How does it happen, or when? Does truth manifest itself? Yeah, well, last time we said it didn't, you see. Huh? Last time I think we said the truth does not manifest. Uh, manifest in the sense... Uh, in reality, anyway. Yeah. No, uh, let's get this clear. I'm not... Mm -hmm. Let's get it clear. We are saying there is reality and truth. Mm -hmm. We know uh, the activities of thought in that field. And we say that uh, field of reality has no relationship, no connection with truth. And then we say, how does truth appear? Hmm? Is that it? Yes. Is truth an abstraction? Well, no, it better not be. I mean, it wouldn't make much sense if it were an abstraction. No, so it is not an abstraction. No, that would be thought. I mean, it would still be the um, mm. form of thought calling mm -hmm. itself truth. All right, it's not an abstraction. It must be out of time. Hmm? Yes. It must be, it must have no... Continuity. So it must have no relationship to the past or to the future. Yeah, which implies, that, like we said last time, there's no relationship to thought. Thought. No. I've just. Yeah. And that seemed, in some way, fairly uh, good, fairly clear. Uh, uh, Except now that you see the it's now a question of, of the totality of it. That, that see, if you say there's a uh, there's an action of truth which is always right, except which is always certain, total, total in we are sense, great, yes. yes. And this is not necessarily continuous, though. Of course, Cannot be. no, but it may happen from moment to moment. Yes. Right? Yes. And in between, there may be uh, incomplete awareness then. In between? Oh, I see, I see. I Lack see of complete see. attention. I you see, see I'm you trying mean. to get a I, clear... Uh, yes, I understand. I have to go into this a little mm. bit more. Yes, if I could say one more point, then see which is, you know, they say that in some sense thought is not present, it's gone, it's uh, when truth operates. Yes. When truth, and yes. now, nevertheless, see, on one stage I was, we were saying that thought is inherently twisted. And I raised the question whether we could even do without it, you know, do all the functions which we do without it, but it's not clear whether we can or not. It's we like can or not do without thought in between. Without, oh, you see, quite, quite, quite. Uh, now, or is there something like you know another function which will do the function of thought without being twisted? Or the other possibility is that thought works 
still it gets a bit twisted and truth comes in a flash <laughs> you see these are the yes 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 should we approach it i'm just asking yes. what, what is action all right could we come through it that way we know the activities of thought changing patterns each pattern creating its own disorder its own mischief its own pain <coughs> and moving always within that area we know the activity so what is action which is not of that area of of that in that mm-hmm. of that field it must be without a motive it must be without conformity without uh, imitation following a pattern and so on so it, it must be totally free from memory hmm? would you yes well that's the section huh the action of truth truth the action of truth must be told that is in one yeah, that's a tremendous <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right i'll stick to that yes but still there is also the action of memory you see i mean or is there you see now wait, wait, i just want to catch yes. a little bit truth uh, the action of truth is free, is free from all memory but it may refer use memory or may it or that perhaps it doesn't uh. if it acts instantly then it, it cannot be. then it uses no memory no memory yes all right Well, in other words memory is another activity is a yeah a different order but wait me yes i need to see something wait me let's mm-hmm. go into a little bit Perce- perceiving without the perceiver which means there is only perception and the action of perception is instantaneous and therefore it is true in that case memory is not necessary no not at that moment not at that moment at that second or whatever at that moment memory is not necessary when is memory necessary to carry out that action to of uh, to, to carry out that perception well it could be i mean but it also could see memory might be necessary in all the various activities in which you are doing you yes know, for example moving around and, yes and, yes yes now uh i'm not sure that the perception is carried out do you see uh, no then if it is not carried out then it's not true it's true it has to be but is it carried out in uh, in reality is it carried out in the, in field, the of field of reality just let me think is it carried out in the field of reality not just me there is perception of perception which is to see things as they are actually mm-hmm. uh, see what is what is what is actual without the interpretation of the perceiver with all his background so on right all right so we see what is actual and that actuality may include as i see it the actuality of, of our thought you know that it's false yes 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 but i'm yeah. i'm we are for the moment i'm i'm consider, we are considering what is the action of truth mm-hmm. and what is and 
has it any relationship to memory in action, in carrying out? What? No. Oh no. If, I mean, uh, we say time and truth is from moment to moment. And the action of truth is from moment to moment. And that action is totally unrelated to memory. Finished. Right. Now we must then consider the action of memory, you see. Cause ah, that's quite different. It's a different one, but I want to consider yeah, it. Yeah, quite. Yes. We can go into that. And now, uh, so besides that, we have the action of memory. Yes, the action of memory. In order to find your way around, you need it in order to do rice jobs. Yes, all that. All right, and now that action of memory, insofar as it's thought, may become twisted. Yes. Confused. No, sir. I don't think it can get twisted if there is total integrity. Well, now we have to come, because that again brings up the question of apparent relation between truth and I thought, think, you see. Yeah, but I, I'm not... I mean, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm considering it. If there is complete integrity in thought itself... Yes, all right. But that's a kind of truth in thought, then. Uh-huh. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost the same as talking of truth in thought. I know, no, no. Now, what is the distinction between integrity and truth, you see? Oh, Lord. Well, we got to... Uh, mm, yeah. What is integrity? Well, it really means wholeness, you see, oneness. So. Is integrity of wholeness? It's oneness, you see. It really I, means that. I, yes, I see. It means it's not divided, not fragmented, you know, not contradiction, not confused. You see, it's it's, it's integral. All oh, right, sir. One, one can be totally integrated. And living a life of non of non fragmentation, living a life whole in the ordinary sense. Now, will that is that is that man living a life of truth? Well, I don't think he could actually be in. in truly integral without living a life of truth. You see, I think he would be deceiving himself. No, what I'm trying to say is can thought ever be totally integral? Well, that's the question I'm raising, you see, because you seem to imply a minute ago that it could, you see. Can't it, sir? All right. Can't thought see its own fragmentation and very well. Perhaps it could, but you see, why does thought then generally disintegrate? You see, to fail to why be does thought why does thought fail to be integral? I would put it to disintegrate. <laughs> why you does see? because it is not aware of its aware in the sense it's not it doesn't aware I'll use the word in the ordinary sense it is not aware of its of its fragmentary character yes well when it becomes aware of its fragmentary character uh-huh. is that true well that is the truth of thought isn't it that is, it is that is the, that is the truth of thought the truth of the nature of thought. Truth of the nature of thought. Right. 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 But that that is not truth, is it? No. Well, the truth. What is the distinction between the truth of something and truth? We must ah, get yeah, that clear. You see. Right. We are getting nearer. 
what's the distinction between the nature of the truth of the nature of thought and truth itself you yeah. see the truth of the nature of thought I can see my thought being fragmentary and thought then realizes the actuality of his movement Right. Right. But when it realizes the actuality of its movement, it's aware of it. Is that truth? That in itself, no. But no. Uh, but but it is the truth of. Uh, it of is the thought. truth of. Uh, it is the truth. In the false. Yes, the truth in the false. That's, that's what I meant. Yes. Yeah, is the truth in the false. Yes, sir. That's but that truth is not the truth. Yes, well, truth itself, will say, is beyond uh, what we could describe, yes, you see. Yes, right? yes, yes. Uh, now, but, you see, we, see, we're still in this area which is unclear as to whether truth apparently has a relation to thought, in the sense that we discuss the truth of the nature of thought, do you see? Truth, the nature of thought, yes. Yeah, the truth of the falseness of the yes, nature of yes, thought, do you see? Yes, And that seems to establish a relationship again. No, I... No, let's... <laughs> I see the truth in the false. Yes. And all, and also I say that truth is not the truth. No. no but now we, and I'm not very clear about what the distinction is. Yeah. I'm kind of yeah. verbally clear. Uh-huh. <coughs> I see my, my thoughts are crooked. I see because I see my thoughts are crooked, the seeing is the truth, is, is the truth that the, the thought is crooked. Yes. That's all. But that is a truth. Right? No. But you just said so. I know. Yeah, but I mean, you said it was the truth. It was the truth in the false. Yes, the truth in the false. Now, we want to get clear. What yeah, is, yeah. There, there is a division. The truth and the false. Oh, yeah. What is the division? The false and the true. Yeah. In truth, yeah. Uh, the truth has no division. Hmm. In that, there is no false. Yes. All right, but you see, uh, one it has been suggested by some people that we should not use the word true and false as opposite, but rather correct and incorrect. Yes, correct or right. Correct yes. and incorrect. We can use any word. And, right. uh, I mean, it will avoid the difficulty. I understand. Correct and incorrect. So you could say that what is correct about uh, the correctness of thought is that... It, no, it is correct to uh, see its incorrectness, I don't know, to see its yes. twistedness. The, or... the, the thought sees... Its twistedness its, correctly. Yeah, the thought sees its incorrectness. Correctly. Correctly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, thought sees its, itself as incorrect correctly. Yes. Right. Yes. And the seeing correctly of the incorrectness of thought uh-huh. is, you are saying, is true. Thought is well, no, I'm ready to drop that now because of in this different language, you see. I see. All right. In other words, I think that part of the trouble may have been some confusion about the use of words, uh-huh. you know, the or same word for different correct. things, you see. Now, Truth has nothing to do. No, no, now it's clear. In this language, it's clear that truth has yeah, nothing to right, do with it. You see. Right. Now, but I wanted to clear up one more point. When you say thought sees, uh, I, I thought we could put it like this: that we not only have awareness, but conscious awareness, as we call it. You see, the, that there is a kind of awareness which includes, you know, which is the awareness which goes with thought. Yes, uh, like a good business, quite. Yeah, quite. conscious awareness. You yes. see, and it's conscious. that conscious awareness which sees. The properties of thought. Yes. 
So it's not an inconsistency to say that thought sees something, do you see? Yeah, yeah I see. Uh, thought sees the incorrectness. Yes, the thought is consciously aware of the incorrectness <laughs> of its, uh, of its uh, mode yeah. of operation, you yes. see. <laughs> yes, right. The mode of its operation, correct and incorrect. Now, that's simple enough. Yeah. Then what's the question? Well, then, you see, I think then there's no question because we say truth is really something different. Different. You see, the, you see the, oh, a lot of the trouble has come that's because a, we're using... That, I, that is so. It is entirely yeah, different. Yeah, the word true has been used in several different senses. Different, quite. Correct and incorrect. Yeah. Right. Now... Then what is the problem? Now, yes, well, let's try to put it now. Uh, you see, I, I'll change the... I'll bring in a few more points, if you don't mind. Uh, I've been reading Mary Lutchen's book about you. Oh, you <laughs> Which I find quite interesting. Uh, oh, Lord. Well, well, I assume you wanted it read because... Uh, <laughs> it's public. You seem to approve of its, <laughs> Go ahead. No, of its publication. I, I ask you, the facts are these. Raj Gopal yes. asked... What's his name? Alan Watts and someone else, if they would help him to write the biography. Knowing what Raj Gopal is, knowing, mm -hmm. knowing in quotes, I said that must never happen because then it'll be, it'll all be one sided and not complete. So I asked Mary. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'll try and do it. I asked, no, Shivarao in India had collected for me during many years a whole, all the events that took place. And he was going to do it, but his eyesight failed. Uh -huh. And then I said to him, could I ask Mary Lachins? She said, delighted. He, he knows her. I said, if she does it, I'll accept it. And that's how it happened. Right. Well, I think it's you know a very well written book. It's uh, uh, quite but you interesting. But you mean you've got all of the book already and read? Yes. Uh, well, it <laughs> holds your attention. <laughs> uh, now. But Harry, Mary gave us a copy. Ah, I see. Yes. She gave of us course, a copy. Of course, of course, yes. of course. She said that. Uh, That's right. But uh, quite right. Sorry. Now. You see, uh, and that raises, uh, you know, this book discusses uh, some uh, process you went through, some transformation, and uh, it always raises the question of the difference between, you know, the state of truth and the ordinary state. Yes. Which really, I think, we would, would, would help us if we got it very clear. Uh, now, uh, the... Uh, See how I could put it. That uh, see, it's never clear whether this transformation is sudden or gradual, or whether it ever took place at all. Uh, and I think so. Yes, there are several points there involved. <coughs> We talked about last time, when we were here, or rather downstairs, a mind that's unconditioned. It may be because that such a mind was unhealthy at the beginning, yes. weak, couldn't retain, couldn't be impressed upon. That was the theory we considered. One of the theories. Yes. Uh, it seemed to uh, and one other theory, reincarnation, other theory, yeah. is uh, yeah. goodness yes. no. personified in a person yes. called Maitreya, if you accept that, and manifest and so on. That's one thing. Uh -huh. Then there is... <laughs>
injuries. This whole idea which exists in the East and is, has been written about and gone into and several people have, serious people, not charlatans, been through it. That is, the, the, the Hindu tradition and they say that there is F, or what they call it, serpent flower. Or a Kundalini. Kund- I didn't know it. Kundalini. Well, I mean, it was referred to in the book as book, well. Right, if it is referred to in the book, I must take it up. <laughs> <laughs> that Kundalini can be awakened and a different kind of energy comes into being. Mm. These are the two points. And transformation, I'm beginning to question. Mm. What? I'm beginning to question whether there was any transformation at all. Well, that's what I felt in reading the book, you see. Oh, you felt that? Yeah. Oh, then we'll... Well, at least uh, we're coming I couldn't see any particular place where it would have happened, do you see? Yes, yes. Uh, I think, sir, something... I can tell you one thing. I don't know how to put this. In that book, the brother dies. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I have no memory of that. It's not a pretentious Mm-hmm. Forgetful, but yes. actually, I'm fairly truthful mm-hmm. with regard to these matters. I yes, I understand that. Either he could have gone into cynicism, bitterness, unbelief, and threw the whole thing out, which he didn't do, or. He could have taken comfort in in reincarnation, in meeting the brother uh-huh. elsewhere, which he didn't do either. So what actually took place? If I, I if we could penetrate that, Ra, uh-huh. then perhaps we can understand the transformation never took place. Yes, and I think, you see, what's also interesting is that finally, toward the end, the, cru- the step was made by, uh, you know, the truth is a pathless land, you know. Yes, that, yes. That, in other words, um, you, you were saying more or less the same thing about truth that we, then that we are saying right now, right. you see, and therefore... <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I was really struck by the ex- uh, Similar- all, uh, similarity, almost identity. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, <clears throat> now, you didn't discuss reality then, but at that time you were still using the word in a certain sense, yes. but truth was... Uh, yes, yes. I think then, if neither reincarnation and all the comfort involved in it, nor the cynicism and becoming through all that and becoming worldly and, you know, just disappearing in worldliness. Mm. Worldliness being not money and all that, because that wouldn't have interested him. Just disappearing in some kind of idiocy. Mm. Now, in, in those did not take place. I think what probably happened, because it was so long ago, I have no recollection, is facing the truth of death. Do you feel that was a crucial step there? No, I think that, that's it, we're what? coming to something. I don't think that was a crucial step. No. Though others have said that is the crucial step. Yes, there is. 
yes, it, it never, and in the book it didn't appear that, there was, you know, you could call it a crucial step. Well, no. It seems important. But no. But facing the truth of death. Yes. But now we have to come back to this question of truth. Would you say the correctness or the truth here? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, hmm. yes, yes. I think facing that actuality... Yeah, the actuality of death. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's better. Facing the actuality of death freed him from from uh, the reality of thought. Oh. I think there's something in that. Mm-hmm. So could we put this thing differently? Can the mind be totally detached? From his body? I'm waiting, I must go slowly, I'm I'm quick. Is there a state when the mind is wholly free from all detachment? All attachment. All attachment. Attachment is incorrect. Yes. What do you think? Uh-huh. Hmm? And mind, a thought can see the incorrectness of attachment. Yes. Hmm? Yes, I say it can be aware of it, yes. Yes. Consciously aware. Consciously aware. The implications of attachment. Yeah, I prefer that word because seeing is perception. Is yeah, yeah. Well, thought can be a conscious or what is, consciously aware. Consciously aware that consciously aware of all the implications of attachment. Mm. And says thought can say, Well I won't touch it anymore. Yes. Now, but let's try to go slowly into this. Uh, you like to refer to the fellow as that boy. And that boy, yes. <laughs> he was a young man, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, as a matter of fact, sir. Right. I read it. I read the book right. <laughs> off and on, mm-hmm. few chapters, few pages of it. Really, I haven't gone right through it. I think it's very difficult to talk about this, because what? it's very difficult to talk yeah. about it. It might help to get it clear. If you talk to me a little bit yes, about I'll it, I'll try I'll... to discuss, talk yeah. about it. Yeah. You see, uh, let's say we go back to the, that boy or the young man who was to a certain extent attached to some of the uh, Things about the theosophic, or the beliefs of the th- not, not exactly the beliefs, but the. Uh, I question it. Oh well, was there any attachment at all? I, th- I question it. Oh. That's what I'm questioning. But at least whether there appeared to be. Yeah, uh, uh, you know whether he was just uh, making noise out there. Oh. <laughs> well, for example, there were letters he wrote in which he, you know, he seemed yes, yes. to accept it's, it all. <clears throat> because he was just repeating. But <clears throat> there was no conditioning, but at the peripheral uh, state, he was repeating things which which was told to him. Yeah. 
I think that's uh, that would be accurate. Well, now let's well, that would be correct. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> The other point, you know, is which would suggest some form of conditioning is this uh, process, if, uh, Mary Butchins calls it, in which there was so much uh, suffering. You know, she describes a process in yes. which took many yes. years off and on. Yes. And she said there was a great deal of suffering, and it was Indeed. not clear what was happening then, you see. I mean, yes. whether it had any part in the transformation or not. Defense? Did it have any part in the, in the transformation or not? You see, it might be very... I don't think so. Yes, I wanted to say, just for the sake of making it clear, that it might be very discouraging for people... No, I don't think so. Because they would say, how could we ever do it? No, I think so. (laughs) There are two answers to that. Yeah. You know, the theosophical conception that Maitreya... Mm -hmm. whether you believe it or not, that's not the point. The theosophical conception at that time, or probably still is, or the tradition in India and in Tibet, that there is a Maitreya. Who is the essence of goodness, let's talk. He, that goodness has to manifest in the world when the world is in a state of collapse. That's what the tradition says. In the state of mm, evil, in the state of destroying itself. <clears throat> what are we talking about? Well, <laughs> you see, oh, I'll come back to it. That we're talking, you know, trying to get clear whether this young man was really attached and conditioned or, attached, or not. Attached, now, yes. see, I wanted to finish. I say, let's say, uh, aside from the letters and the relationships, no, which you say are very superficial, then it seemed there was something that went deeply in, involved in this suffering, which, uh, you know, involved, uh, at least on first sight, some form of attachment, say, to the image of the mother or something, you see, or... No, 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 no attachment. No, I mean you have no. But do you have any idea what what, what was involved there? Uh, attached to the mother. Well, you see, uh, as I can remember reading about this uh, thing, which took place over a period of years, I mean some of the phenomena were, you know, intense pain in the head or in the yeah. neck or the spine. But there appeared to be periods when he called for his mother. No, because I think that's merely a physical uh, uh, reaction to, uh, because when you suffer some, you won't, you know, yes. that's all, that's no, not. It, didn't, uh, it was not very significant. No, no. no. Right. Uh, but then you have no... I'm glad to have all this out now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think it helps to clear things up, you see, because it will enable us to see the essential yes, point, sir. you see. Yes, quite right. Uh, now, uh, now the other. So, but then, you, do you have any uh, idea or any explanation of what the trouble was about? Do you see, or was it just something you don't know anything about? I'm afraid I don't know actually anything about it. No, it could have had any reason. No, it could have any reason. Now, wait a minute. What we started out saying: Must everybody go through this? Yes, if so, it looks yeah, very unpromising. It looks <laughs> well, very, uh, most people won't have the time for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Columbus discovered America. Mm. Must everybody go become Columbus to discover America? No, no. 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 All right, so this uh, was the fortuitous way in which this thing came about with yeah. you, right? Yes. For reasons that are, you know, peculiar to your own uh, situation. I, I mean, why you felt, went through this process was something peculiar to you then? Or? No, I, you see, if you have gone into the question of Kundalini, yes, the whole idea there, as far as I have been told by others, mm-hmm. and uh, and some who have been through it. It is a form of awakening or uh, releasing energy through various centers in the body. Yes. 
and those centres have been dormant or not fully in operation. Yes. And therefore, when they, when this energy is, is in movement, it passes through these centres, so called. Then it, there is a certain amount of trouble, uh -huh. certain amount of pain, disturbance, yeah. disturbance, and that is problem. But but is that that? But that is not necessary for the uh, well, the transformation that you discussed. Oh, I no 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 uh, definitely not definitely. It, but in that sense, it was a sort of a side issue. N no, no, I no. wouldn't put it aside. No, well, well, that, yes, well, let's see. What, how was it connected then? <laughs> and I haven't thought about this. I must uh -huh. go into it. All right, so let's go into it. Yeah. There was that young man, or a boy, a vague, mentally not up to his age. Well, he had suffered malaria. Malaria. Uh, which was very disturbing. Great deal of malaria. Yeah. And uh, for that, given a great deal of quinine, probably. Mm. And so there was little dullness. And in that, in that, to that dull mind, nothing could enter. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we say that may be one of the reasons why he was unconditioned. Yes. Why he was not conditioned. That's one point. Not deeply. Not deeply conditioned. The other point is, why had he go through all this suffering? Has it any relation to transformation? Yes. I say it hasn't. Yes. Oh, wait, I must go slowly. There's no sorry. If I admit that, mm. it is, it's part of transformation, every human being has to go through it. Yes. Which is nonsense. Well, it would really be impossible. No, I mean, that's out. Yes. I won't even, <laughs> I won't even, that's out. Throw it out of the window. Then, it's like Columbus going discovering America, everybody has to <laughs> go back. <laughs> Take, that's Take absurd. Him. So, then why had he go through it? What, what relationship has that? I think I've got the answer. I think it releases a certain quality of energy. Yeah, the suffering. Yes. The physical pain of that kind mm. brings about a certain uh, quality of energy. Yes, but that would imply that those who don't go through it may not have it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. No, no. Oh, well, what is the point then? <laughs> Which means again, I, I think I've got it. Just let's go slowly, sir. This is rather difficult. If we admit that everybody has to go through it, this process, uh, all the rest of it, it's, I rule it out. Yes. Because that would be too. Uh, well, it's impractical. I mean, impractical. It would be absurd. Don't let's. Yes, sir. But what takes place? So you're a scientist. You discover something. You see something totally new. And you state that thing verbally and actually. And another scientist picks it up from there and, and goes, goes on. on. Yes. Here, 
and can be mutilated. Here, this man, or this boy, or this young plum, saw the truth. He discovered something new. Yes. As scientists discovered something new. It, and that thing, that new thing, enters into human consciousness. Hmm? Yes. I mean, would you say it's totally new? I mean, never had been before? I don't know. You don't know. At least for him, it was new. I mean, it, of course. Yes. All right. Just to get it clear. I mean, somebody else might have yes, said I mean, it. Yes, it could happen. Different scientists could simultaneously yes, discover yes, the same thing. Yes. But what he discovered, what he saw, was something new. Yes. Not to him. Yes. To him. Ah, no. Wait a minute. Well, it was new. But I mean, you see, we have to be careful. Be careful here. Not to him. It was new. But Full I mean, stop. But then you have to be careful that it does not imply that was not discovered before, you see. And then... Perhaps it wasn't, you see. I'm, 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 I'm I don't all, all know. Views, you see. I don't know. Perhaps that particular thing was never discovered before. Uh, yes. Right? Yes. Perhaps something like it may have been discovered. Yeah, that's better. Right? Right. So, that discovery of something new stated and others can carry on with that newness yes. and discover something more yes but what was the role of the suffering in discovering this new thing was that to re release the energy or probably probably but others may release energy in some other way is that what you're yes implying? Uh, uh, probably, yes. Perhaps. Huh? Perhaps. Uh, wait a minute. <clears throat> this energy is not the energy of thought. No, the Kundalini is so yeah. called. Mm. Uh, because I'm rather shy of that word. Because <coughs> a lot of superstition is associated with it, a lot of uh, charlatans and people have been playing with it. There is now become uh, a man has written a book and you're going around Europe and America find, forming groups who are awakening Kundalini. Uh, there are several people, I saw a film on the TV, a uh, whole group of uh, Americans directed by some in Punjabi dressed in white and doing certain exercises to practice, to awaken Kundalini and all that. I think that's all absurd. But in the case of the young man, you think it had a place, I mean? Yes, the, uh, that's what I'm coming to. Yes. <coughs> There, the release of that energy is something that must come out of suffering. I'm just exploring, sir. Yeah. I mean, change yeah. the whole thing, please. I, yeah, I mean, but is that in general, in general or for that particular case? I think in general. In general, the energy comes from suffering. Yes. And are you implying that there may be some other form of suffering? That's it. But not exactly the same that, form. That's it. We're right. slowly getting it. <clears throat> if in the world of reality, mm -hmm. in the world of, yes, in the world of reality, if I don't escape from suffering, if a human being doesn't escape from suffering through various means and so on, that very suffering brings about a great uh, energy. Yes. I think this is so.
the very world, uh, suffering has its root in passion and all the rest of it. So that is so. Here, in <coughs> this case, it was not a suffering of of attachment. It was not a suffering of losing somebody. It was not a suffering of uh, um, physical suffering, because he was pretty healthy in those days, and still is, <laughs> because he used to walk miles and miles and miles, so there was not all that. So there was no actual psychological suffering except in the, when the brother died. And then he, he looked at him and got finished with it. But the energy of another kind, if we can go into a little bit, is different. Yes, but it doesn't necessarily get awakened by the way it did with this young man. I mean, in other words, through the spine and so on. Or is that... Uh I th that's what I'm trying to convey. Yeah. I think that energy is completely different. From if, what? From this kind of energy. Yeah, from the ordinary kind. From the ordinary kind. And if you say, must everybody go through this in order to get that yeah. energy? I say no, certainly not. But you're implying that everybody may have to go through some kind of suffering. No, no, well, everybody does suffer. He does suffer, but if he doesn't escape his suffering... Then, then he has got it. Then he has got the energy. The energy. Yes. Of, of that kind. Yes. Now it doesn't matter. Does it matter then whether the um, you see the suffering is the suffering of attachment or some other kind? Do you see? No, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Suffering of attachment, suffering of um, losing your wife, one's yeah. wife, suffering of um, oh, physical suffering, yeah, psychological health. suffering. There are great many varieties mm -hmm. of suffering, and if you can understand, face it, and not escape from it, that has quite a different. Energy, the release of certain kind of energy. But it wouldn't necessarily go th take the no, 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 spine no, 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 when somebody pur purposely tries to awaken Kundalini, he has in mind something happening in the spine in a certain order. I don't think so. It can be done purposely. No. Well, let's say it happens. That's, look, that's yeah. what they're trying to do now. Yes, but that would be a mistake. That. They're doing it through methods purposely, with the thought he's trying to create yeah. it. But wouldn't it be better to say that there is an energy which is released by suffering? Facing, am I not escaping suffering? Right? Yes, yes. Which doesn't necessarily show itself or reveal itself in various sensations in the spine or no, in the no, neck. No, that's or right, in that's right. Places, right. That's right. I mean, uh, a man who has faced suffering and has certain, um, he has, he, he has, he has a quality in him. Yeah. He's got, he's got that kind of um, physical drive, physical energy, mm -hmm. physical path. Yes, not it, not sexual passion, that kind yeah. of psychological passion. Yes. Now, uh, and with that energy, uh, of course, that is still not the whole uh, thing. I mean, no, that's not the whole. That's not all. No, certainly <laughs> not all. And uh, we're getting clear. Yes. And say uh, we need a, this quality of energy to, uh, you know, to really see, the, you know, truth as a, you know. Yes. Uh, and, and you not know, too genuine, too. Uh, with the ordinary energy, we cannot actually have truth. I mean, with no, with the ordinary. <laughs> with the or, the ordinary sort of energy. No. 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 The we say truth is unrelated to reality. Reality is the ordinary energy. Then couldn't we yeah, say? Yeah, that's right. And that's right. I mean, like an ambitious man has got tremendous energy. Yes. And his energy operates in in reality as correct and incorrect. Yes. 
Now, let's say this man comes to a certain point where he sees the incorrectness of the whole operation of thought. Yeah. But before anything more happens, he needs a much higher energy. What happened? Before, you know, the whole uh, perception can work, it would seem he needs the kind of energy we're talking about. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, no, you see, uh, it almost seems from what you say that uh, in some sense you could say nobody is going to be transformed. I mean, in other words, that the issue of transformation is irrelevant. No. No, but then we have to see why. Because you say in the case of that young man there was no transformation. No. Right? Now, what does it mean? <laughs> It shows that in the book you said. Yeah, well, it's a, I couldn't see any place where you would say yes, there was one. You see. Yeah, good. I'm I glad. wouldn't say that it shows, you know, positively, but in some negative, in an yes. implicit sense. Yes. Uh, but sir, there, there must be a transformation, or radical or basic change in the field of reality. Well, what will become of the field of reality then? Then there will be order in that. Yes, in that. all right. All right, so this transformation will bring about order in the field of reality. In the field of reality. Yes. Transformation, which is order and so on, and in the field be, of reality. And then we'd say in some sense there would still be thought, but it is not uh, twisted, right? No, yes, that's right. It will be correct thought. Correct thought. Yes. But, uh, Logical, sane, healthy, and all the rest of it. But that has nothing to do with truth. That's we said that. Right. Now, so I think there are, we went into this too little bit the other day, the energy of truth and the energy of reality are two different things, unrelated to each other. Yes, I mean, could we say that in actuality, the two, you see, now act, truth works and act, operates in actuality. Yes. And in some sense, reality also is actual. Yeah, that's right. right. Now, could we say that reality is a function of actuality? I mean, uh, reality is a, a function within actuality. Within uh, ac reality is a function. Mm -hmm within actuality. You see, that it's a function, a certain yes, function right. taking place uh, within actuality, a rather limited kind. Yes, hmm? yes. What are we trying to get at? I'm well, I'm lost uh, you see, uh, uh, well, one point is to try, we want to understand the uh, see, get really clear what reality means. I think we are clear yeah, about really clear that, but I just wanted to. I think it helps to clear it up to say it, it is a function within actuality, a function which includes thought and conscious awareness, and uh, in and, actuality, in actuality, and right. various actions which are taking place. Yes, yes, that is the energy, as you say, of the ambitious man is the. Extreme it's all case. within the field of reality. The field of reality, which is part of actuality. Part of actuality, yes. Right. What is going on? What actually. is actually going on? What is actually going on? You see that. See, that's clear. That's clear. So that is, rea reality is the movement of actuality. It's part of the movement. Part right? of the movement. Because there's a much bigger movement Mo of actuality. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And you see, uh, uh, but of course, one of our mistakes, you know, incorrectnesses of thought, is to take reality as the whole of actuality. Yes, quite. Uh, or now. Then we say truth also operates or acts in actuality. Yes. And, and see, the way it seems to me is that uh, I would now propose, uh, for your what you want to think, that truth has no direct connection with reality, mm -hmm. but in some sense through actuality, insofar as it acts in actuality, there, there may be a connection, do you see? See, we want to try to say, uh, otherwise, what is this truth, do you see? That is, uh, we say, uh, see, there is actuality and, and then there is, uh, there is truth, right? Yes, there is actuality. Which is, uh, you know, all action, inside and outside. Inside. Yes, yes. And it includes perception. Yes. 
and, and the action of truth, whatever that may be. The action of no, 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 go through yeah. now with me. Actuality in reality in yes. No, reality is a part of act, uh, you know, a part of the field of actuality. Reality is part of the field of actuality. Or don't call it a field. No, it's part uh, of actuality. Reality is, is part of actuality. Yes, a Let small me, part. Let me get actual. What is actually going on? Yes. So reality is part of what's actually going well, on. That's better. And that includes it's reality, consciousness. Yes, all that. Reality is. Mm, is seeing what is actually going on. Well, no, I think that you see. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah, you see, uh, uh, reality is a certain part of what is actually going on. That part which we think about. You see that. See, re we we said reality is what we think about. Right. That was the way we started the whole thing. Right. Yes. Right. That's right. Reality right. is what we think. think about. But it's also an actuality. Yes. Because we take action. Yes, from what that's we right. think about. Actuality, yes. That's and right. that actuality spreads out like a wave and making objects that may go out into the environment and come back. You see, uh, so that if we look at the tree uh, as something we think about, then it becomes part of our reality. Yes. And we may do something to the tree. But it's actual. It, it is actual, yes. That's right. That's clear. Yes. That's clear. That's yes. clear. And in addition, we say there might be some. Uh, actuality to the tree beyond what we think about. Yes. Right? Right. Uh, or in general, actuality goes beyond what we think about. Actuality mm. is all action. It's all action, I understand. But when it goes beyond reality, actuality, yeah. is that truth? Well, we don't know that. Yes, you that, see. It. That's what we are trying to find, find out. At least, tr uh, it does seem that truth does act in that field, in that total act action, or doesn't it act at all? Yeah, wait a minute. That m man or the boy, mm -hmm. the youth, saw. Truth was a pathless land, yes. and no organization could lead to it, anybody. Yes. So he dissolved the organization. Yeah. That's the action of truth. Yes. He didn't. He talked to various people naturally, but the the, the perception and the realization that path is truth is a yeah. pathless land and dissolved it. That's yes. It. I, I see that now. See, so let's look at that for a little while. Yeah, that's what I see that. There was a perception not involving time, the truth that you know, the right. truth there was no organization. There was no time. Just saw it. Yes, and that was an action. Yes. And now, from then on, he was in the field of reality. He was taking actions, talking to people, and so on. Yeah. And finding a way to uh, act, you know, to you know, finding a way to uh, carry out what that meant, you see. In other words, uh, he later, it took some time before he dissolved the organization. Because that was simple enough. That yeah. Because he had to, you know, well, it was he had to dissolve it the right, give way. right way, and how not to yeah. hurt people, and yes, give and land. Not that's, to create that, chaos, you see. That's nothing. All right, but, now, but it took a certain amount of time to, to carry it out. To carry it out. Now, and, and in that, so let's try to say, in that sense, it seemed that in some way, the reality was Affected by truth, you see. Ah, ah. No, well, let's see it. No, no, sir. He saw truth is passed slang. Yeah. And an organization was formed around him, and he says, since he saw that the truth is a pathless land, he said, out, finish. Ah, yes. Hmm? But because you, he was surrounded by organization. Uh -huh. hmm? Well, look, does, does thought or become consciously aware of the implications of truth, do you see? In other words, it seemed thought... Uh, no. It doesn't, but you see, look, there, look. Huh? You, you no. Have, it's not very clear what happened. You see, here's the young man, and his actions have changed. You see, his, his thought has changed, because at one stage he was thinking, I'm, I'm working together with these people. And yes. at a later stage, he was thinking, "I'm dissolving the organization." No, no, not thinking. No, but he, 
But he was taking the steps, the thought and thought necessary to dissolve yes. it, right? No, but he saw... I know, he saw that the organization has to be dissolved. That truth was the pathless land and no organization No organization, can, but then that came, is f- finished. But, but to implement that, it was necessary. Uh, no, the implementation of that yeah. took I'm, thought. Yeah, I'm trying to understand how thought becomes aware that it has to implement this, do you see? Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. I don't think that's very difficult, well, is I it? Am. If you see something, yes. and that is true, I mean, that is the yeah. truth, then uh, you get rid of your things quickly or yes. slowly, finished. Yes, but thought is aware that see, by, you have to think how to do it. No. Well, you did because you thought I must be, you know, not to create chaos, not to har- harm people. Yes. And so on. Uh, but but that's all irrelevant. Well, it may be irrelevant to the main point, but see, uh, it's it's. Are you asking a question? To understand. I understand. You're asking. It was not relevant to that young man at the moment to think about all this, but I'm saying in order to understand what we're trying to do now, it may be relevant. You're asking. How did thought capture or, or or become aware of that truth? Yes, or the implications. Implications of that. Not truth. necessarily the truth itself. No, implications of the truth, which is, he said, truth is a puzzle, no organization necessary. Yes. No guru is necessary, basically. Yeah. <coughs> He saw it, acted, for, for him that was over. Yes, I understand it that far. You know, it, 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 with him it was dead, you see. It was dead, yes. yes. But he was surrounded by an organization. And by all his friends. By all, by all the implications yes. of it. Dr. Besant, who had built it up, and, mm-hmm. I mean, all that involved. Well, he didn't want to harm many of these people. Uh, harm, hurt her. Hurt her. He didn't want to hurt her, uh, but that was, you know, partly a, a way, of, a matter of thinking. Yes, yes. He didn't want to hurt her, so he told her before. Yes. Mm? And thought had to be aware somehow of the implications of truth yes. to do that. Yes. I understand, I understand the question very well. What's the difficulty? What's the difficulty? Well, yeah? because you I'm see, previously sure. we said that thought, you know, that truth does not act at all in the field of thought or consciousness no, or reality, no. but in, in some way consciousness becomes aware of the implications of truth, you see, there seems yes. to be a, a difficulty yes. there. I understand. I must go slowly with this. Mm-hmm. He saw, acted. To him it was dead. It's finished. Yes. Finished means completely ended. No regrets, no follow. Yes, it had no meaning. I mean, no, no meaning anymore. But he was surrounded by all this. How did truth give its intimation to thought? Yes. Is that it? Yes, that's it. (laughs) How did truth convey what it saw to thought? Yes, at least enough. uh, Yes, yes. Not all of it. um, Just a little. How did you do it? How did truth intimate to it to thought? Was there an intimation? Well, maybe not. Then you say, well, what, then what did happen? You say. Yeah, that's just. Was there an intimation? Logically. Thought saw this. Yes. The action which he took, acted, finished, thought saw it. That was correct. Yes. 
Hmm? But, uh, but what, how did thought see the action? Do you see what, what action did thought see? What happened? What happened? What happened was he saying, truth is past land, no organization. Right, so let's go ahead. But as a, the perception was acted, the perception of truth in, in the actions of the man, right? Is that what you're saying directly? What is that? See, how, what, see, thought is not able, we said, to actually see what truth does. No. But truth may take an action. I, truth took action. Fact took action, and thought can be aware of that action. Is that thought what you're saying? Thought can be aware of that action. That's right. All right, I'm, it's coming more clear then. Come, that's see, right. It, tr truth takes a direct action in actuality. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that action now becomes comes to consciousness, conscious yes. awareness. Right? Yeah, that's right. Right. And sees the correctness of it. Sees the correctness, and then it goes on to think what to do, to, okay. to implement that's right, it. Right. That's All right, right, so that's becoming more clear. That's right. And that's actually what took place. Yes. Because he, he put it in words. Yes, but the action was to put it in words. That's right. But first there was an action before that, uh, some other action, which thought could become consciously aware of, perhaps. Yes. And then it put it in words. No. Or immediately no. put it in words. Yeah, truth put it into words. But yes, the truth <laughs> can act in words without thought, then, yeah. is that right? Wait, wait, no, wait, careful, careful. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> the description is not the describe. Yes. The word is not the thing. Yes, uh, we understand that. He used the word to describe that. Yes, but who used it? You see? Was it truth or was it the? Uh, <laughs> he saw. He saw. Now, how did the word come from that? Do you see that? See, the he stuff. saw. Yes. And the seeing is the acting. Yes, the mind was not. That was all dead, and that the action was that the entire structure was dead right dead. away. Yes, the whole thing was dead. Yes. By. Saying truth was a pulseless land. Oh, but before he even said a word, there must have been a of perception. Course, of course, of course, there was perception. And that was all dead. 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 And now, then it came out, truth is a pathless land. land. Right. Then he put it into words. But I mean, if, but truth is a pathless land is words, isn't it? Or that's it? merely the description. The description. Oh, wait a minute. All right, now we left out a step, so yeah. we're coming. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, all right, so the whole thing was dead. Then came a perception without the word, truth is a pathless land. That, that, is was, really, that was perception. That was perception, but it was the, the, the uh, I, we are merely describing it. Yeah, describing it. And, all right, now then how did that come to the word? We say the word is not the thing. Yes. Description is not the described. So, you, I tell you, look at that tree. Yes. You actually look. Yes. And the word, the word is not the tree. Yes, so I you look, see the tree. I see the tree, but now then I become aware of the tree. Yes, and then you tell me. Yes, well, consciously aware that is. Yes. So I, all right. So thought became consciously aware of the perception. Of this, oh yes, that's right. Of the truth is, uh, yeah. the, which yeah. we describe yeah, by the words right. "truth is a yeah. pathless yeah. land." Yes. You see. All right. That's so right. good. Now I'm see, we're you. making it. All right. So. We have a perception, it acts immediately, the structure is dead, and it also contains a, a kind of a generalization or something universal. I mean, a perception, truth is a pathless land, you see. Therefore, you're saying truth is universal. Yes. That's one thing, huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so therefore... Global. It, uh, it, yeah. it was two things which could not be... We were only separating them in words. You see, one was the ending of the entire structure it was dead, and the other is this universal... Truth is a pathless land, right? Yes. It is, we are merely describing it in words, words, but it is not what it is. Quite right. Uh, now, that is an action. Yeah, that's right. And now, that action, thought can become consciously aware of that action. Yes. Right? Yes. So awareness, you see, is, is a kind of link between thought and... Uh, no, no, no. No, no. It not, but at least conscious awareness is what enables thought to be uh, to pick that up. You see, I'm looking at the tree. I'm both aware of the tree and conscious of the tree. Right, consciously aware. Yes, but you, you, 
telling me yeah. about the tree is the yeah. description. That's the description. You telling me, using the word, and you say the word is not the thing. Yeah. So I have to look. Yes, you will look, and that, then some, that, that, that looking is an action. Yes. And that action, then thought can become consciously aware of it. That's right. Right, and then it can come out as words or Word. pictures. That's right. That's right. So truth has nothing whatsoever to do with thought. Yes, but thought can be aware of the action of truth. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. All right, now we're coming. Yes. Thought can be aware of the action of truth. Consciously aware. Of action aware. of truth. Yeah, the action of truth. Truth. It can become conscious of it. That's it says, right. right. I've got it. Yes, it's That's conscious right. awareness, you see. That's right, quite right. right. All right, well, well just right. for the so, sake of... Yes, go slow, it's, it's slow, very go good, slow, yes. I'm just... It's very I'm good, no. a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite right. Now, I mean, it just occurred to me to ask a question about awareness. You know, I've discussed conscious awareness now, you see, I've been saying, and now is there any other awareness that is not conscious, or would we say that's meaningless? Yes, there is another awareness. Right, that is not conscious. Yeah. Right. That is not in the field of reality. That's the same thing. Yeah. Of course, I just... Yes. All right, so we are distinguishing conscious awareness from awareness in general, right? universal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in fact, awareness would be hard to distinguish from attention or something. But I mean, these words are very hard to define. I know, I know. Uh, so would you put it this way? The center, hmm, which is the me, the observer, mm -hmm. can be aware of itself, conscious of itself, hmm, yes. and operate within that field. Yes. That awareness, that consciousness, is limited, is enclosed. Yes. But there is a consciousness, uh, not awareness. we should not, an awareness, as some other state, yeah. which is not this. Yes, and that, that also includes attention, the other state. Attention. The other state includes attention and awareness. Attention. Yes, there is awareness and attention in this other state. Or... Mm -mm. No. No. But you said there is awareness in the other state. No. Oh, you see, that's no. not very clear. I, I must, let's go slowly. Yes. That boy must go back. Yeah. Pathless land. He sees it. Non verbally, because hmm? there's no perception. Sees it. That is the truth that acts. It's finished. Yes. As far as truth is concerned, it's over. Yes. Then the, the wave takes on the words. Yes, it's the conscious awareness. <laughs> conscious awareness and describes it and yes. the description is not that. Yes. Now, in the field of reality, there is all the aware, conscious awareness. Yes. Which is limited yes. with its attention, with its mm, awareness. Yes. It's limited. Yes. That perception of truth is limitless. Yes. But would you say that it contains any awareness or not, do you see? Oh, it's no awareness. No awareness, yes, that's yeah, what we want that's to... That's it. Right. it we, that's what we said last time, that there's some nothingness. It which, is nothing. Uh, it's, nothing. It's, it's over. It's which, yes. perception, it's over. Yes, which, you know, really uh, is not even... It's beyond attention, beyond awareness. Oh, yes. Although attention and awareness are themselves not verbal, are not... Just yes. Thought, yes. Yes. That's right. Although they are not verbal, yes. they are not uh, they are not shaped by thought. Yes. That ha that attention, that mm, awareness, is not there. Yes. Quite right. So could we say the attention and awareness are still part of the physiological, physiological structure, that's but right. beyond thought? Be beyond. Uh, yes. thought is a small part of the physiological structure. That's right, sir. And there's attention, awareness far beyond that. But then yeah. this truth is, uh, is universal. It's beyond yeah, that. It's beyond that. Yes. 
at last we are getting it. Uh, no. And there is the attention. You see? Yeah. Now. It is said, I'm not saying it is so, it is said the awakening of Kundalini. Yes. Now we are familiar with that word. But the Kundalini would be part of the physiological Physi structure. No, but there is, they, according to them, there is an energy which is, which is, not, is not physical. Yes, it's, I see, it's awakened in the, in the physical. No, no, you must go through no, it very carefully, if you want to know it. It goes through various centers. Yes, but these are physical centers. Physical centers, like the solar plexus, yes. is the main center. Yes. Mm -hmm. And below that. And there's a center at the thorax, mm -hmm. and center in the back of the head, center in front of the... Oh, there's one in the, at the center of the... near the heart, and one at the, in the middle of the forehead. Ultimately, there is a... it goes through the top of the head. Yes. That's there. Mm -hmm. They say when it goes through the top of the head, that energy is entirely different. Yes. It's not physical anymore. Uh, no more. Mm. Yes, now what do you feel about that explanation? No, I wouldn't say what I feel. I would say the energy of truth is entirely different from yeah. the energy of reality. Yes. Uh, but the Kundalini might not... Uh, be part of it, it might or might not be the energy. It is not the energy of truth. Eh? No, me. no. Wait a minute, we're careful. Huh? Yes, well, is it? We said, oh, we said that the energy in reality is both physiological as, as psychological. Yes. And therefore it's always limited. Hmm. And we say truth is global. Yes. And it has its energy, which is global, which is not uh, personal or all the rest of it. That's right. Yes. I mean, wouldn't you say Kundalini is a side issue? In other words, my own feeling is that once you consider truth, then Kundalini must be something more limited. Oh, of course. Of course. It cannot be the same as truth. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, but it might be a combination of physical and physio psychological energy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which you say the young man found helpful. Yes, in, yes, yes. Right. All right, now, uh, but it might not be absolutely necessary. Uh, in other words, you're saying truth, right? Yes, sir. I think that's right. Truth is global. Yes. And this is limited. Yes. Yes. And nobody need go through all this business to see this. Yes. Columbus discovered America. That's a good example. Now, if we take the truth, you know, the energy of truth, um, which is universal, not personal. Hmm. Thank you. I'm so... my body's... Just hmm. I must take a little... All right, we'll take it easy. Because you I never talked about this, mm -hmm. and it, my body becomes a little tense. I must. Phew. May I get up for a few minutes? No okay. point. I'll just stretch my legs. Right. No, I'm just stretching my legs. So I must get up little. That's it. You see, sir, there's something much more than all this. Yes. Would you accept the word mystery? Well, yes, I should say so. Hmm? Mm. 
there is something which you, which you cannot talk about. Not which you cannot talk about. Uh-huh. Which doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Uh-huh. I think truth is that uh-huh. every religion has talked about that mystery. Mm-hmm. Jew, the Judaism said the nameless. Hindus have called it Brahman. Others Christians haven't gone very deeply into that matter, called it God. But there is something really tremendously mysterious. Uh-huh. And we are trying to articulate it in ter- in words. Well, not really. You know, and I think we're trying just to clear up clear, I know, I know. some of the difficulty of people, of what has been yeah. said. Oh, they're going to lots of difficulty. <laughs> if they read this book, they're going to have lots of difficulty. <laughs> uh, I feel that if we... I don't believe that anything we've done clears up this... I mean, as... as we have cleared up a great deal. Yes, I mean, it doesn't touch this mystery, as you oh, said. No, no, it but can't. It's merely so that we can communicate yes, more yes. effectively. No, but if you, if, as a scientist, accept that there is something mysterious... Yes, I mean, uh, I should say, you know, that we our reason can only... Uh, go so far. Go, you know, in some limited way. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it cannot be limited in any particular way, but it can never uh, be the whole... Go thing. beyond it. Quite. See, when, when you touch that mystery, I mean, things are totally different. Huh. Sorry, my body is just absolutely huh. shaking with it. Come down. You see, so reality can never, thought can never touch that. Then what is it that is aware of that? Or conscious of you. How, how do you. Why do you say there is a mystery? Well, it's hard to explain, but I mean, partly because I can see that the whole thing can never be explained by, you know, by any thought. In other words, uh, thought cannot touch it. Hmm? Yeah. Then who, then how, what is it that says there is mystery? You follow my point? You see, the Christian say there is a mystery which you cannot go beyond, which you cannot touch. The saints have said this. I'm afraid them, but from talking to some of the people who have read about the saints, like all the Sakshin, they say there is a mystery which you cannot. I am not sure they they touched that mystery. Because they were they were Christians. They were worshippers of certain form. I don't Yes, well you may say there's a mystery because uh, you don't want to penetrate you see, let's try to put it like this, uh, the way I've seen yes, it. Yes, that's right. Uh, you see, I think that to a certain extent uh, the ego works on a sort of a parody of this mystery. You see, the ego makes itself so mysterious, mysterious in quite. order to protect itself from the scene. <laughs> uh, uh, now, therefore, in a way, the ego presents itself to itself as God, do you see, or as, as the ultimate mystery. Yes. Uh, and therefore, 
if, if it's identified with Christian or some other teaching, it will make these teachings very mysterious too, you see. So there is a... See, it may be, the way I look at it is that perhaps thought makes somehow becomes dimly hinted, uh, uh, conscious of something. Yes. And it tries to imitate or form a, to capture it for itself by imitation. Quite, quite. Mm. Now, would you, as a scientist, logically trained, logically reason, usage of words, <clears throat> and so on, admit there is such thing as mystery? Yes, I, uh, you see, I, I don't think even, say, our thought will stand up. Uh, when probed all the way, it always dissolves, you see. Quite. It cannot a, probe beyond, yes. Yeah, it may extend and extend and extend, yes. but eventually it comes to some horizon, you know. Where it cannot, yes. yes. I think... Begin again. The, because that boy was unconditioned, was not conditioned, though at the peripheral existence he was. Yeah. But basically he was not. Well, can we go slowly here? Uh, when, because that raises the question of others who are basically conditioned, and could we understand a little of what that means? Yes. Oh, condition uh, means. with greed, envy, you know, all conditioned. Yes, but I mean, it's not clear what the difference is, you see. Uh, ah, what's the difference? I, I, think, I think there is a difference. <clears throat> you see, really, if you read that book, he didn't really wake up till about when he was what? Quite late. Yeah, well, I don't know exactly when, but... Um, quite late. It already had been picked up by the Theosophists. And, uh, quite late. Yes. It, one of Dr. Besant's uh, suffering or misery was his, he said to me, I don't know if it's put in that book, he said, you are now 33 or so. It wasn't in there. You are not interested in anything, not in women, <laughs> not in uh, what I'm doing, what about the book. You're only interested, apparently, in clothes and cars. <laughs> mm? And what's going to happen? Yes. You follow, sir? It was a tremendous problem to her. Because she invested everything in that book. Mm -hmm. So this conditioning with the ordinary people, I'm not ordinary, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm ordinary. Well, the ordinary with conditioning. Uh. The or <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> the, the ordinary conditioning goes very deep. Right? Yes, but it's not clear what makes it go so deep. Ah, what makes it go deep? his education, his environment, his parents, his society. Everything makes him, makes uh, ordinary conditioning, makes for ordinary conditioning. Yes, but it, which somehow... Uh, this didn't happen to that boy. Yes, could I put it like this, that the really deep conditioning is the conditioning which uh, allows for falsification, for self-deception. You see, in other words, uh, if somebody is conditioned to deceive himself in order to fit better into society, society. That, is the, that is the thing we have in mind. Yes, all right. That, that's the really deep condition. Deep condition. It's let's deeper take than anything. It's yeah. as deep as anything else. Yes, yeah. <laughs> let's take that for the moment. <clears throat> Deceiving himself in order to fit into, into society. society. That's the deep condition for the moment we see. Yeah. This didn't take in that boy. Yes. Or in that young man. <clears throat> so he never wanted he there was no self deception. 
Eh? Yes. See, there was false information, let's say, that uh, wrong information, which he accepted from the elder yes, people. Yes, 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 all that. Yeah. And so there was never a conscious effort to see truth. That can be to anything. Go slowly. Yes, I mean we went. To, I think we skipped a few steps there. You see. Oh yes. Uh, you see, see that implies that a person who is caught in self-deception feels impelled consciously to seek truth to overcome. Oh yes, but he. No. No, you see, it uh, was not clear, no, you see. No. A human being deceiving himself in society, that is, we say, for the, for the time being, deep con- condition. Yes. In this case, it didn't take place. Yes. Why didn't it take place? Because he was... Mm. No, he wasn't absorbing the... You say he was somewhat uh, dulled by his illness da, and so on. By environment, and by mm, ill health. By ill health. That's one of the reasons. One and possibly others. Other reasons. So, there was never any moment where there was no self-deception taking place. What do you mean? I don't get that. Here, yeah. self-deception in order to fit into society. Yes. There, no, 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 no self-deception. No self-deception. Yes. And so, there, because there was no self-deception, because there was no conditioning, he saw directly truth as a part of this land. Yes. Right? Yes. He stated it in words, and words are not a thing, and so the word being thought, thought then operated. Yes. Uh, function. Yes. I mean, that's all worked out uh, worked very out. clearly. Huh? But, but, the, but that perception is gone, finished, yes. not mm-hmm. gone, is dead, what yeah. he saw. Can't. So, Truth is timeless from moment to moment. Yes. It has no continuity. Yes. Right. Then suffering in the field of reality has a meaning in the sense that it can give if he doesn't escape, if a yes. human doesn't escape, it gives him certain quality yeah. of energy. Now let me go slowly on the suffering. You see, um, a suffering, either it might be physical suffering or if it's psychological... Uh, psychological suffering... No, physical suffering mustn't affect the psychological... That's right. That's right. But now, let's, let's take the case of psychological suffering which may be due to this contradiction. You see, let's say, fundamentally, a person is conditioned to deceive himself to fit into society so his mother and father and his friends will accept him. Yeah. He is frightened they won't. Yeah. And then he starts to suffer because he, he, know, he knows that it's not, in some way that it's not true, you see. Yes. And he begins to cover it up and never... And so there's happens. contradiction. There's contradiction. And that's part of suffering. Yes. Now, if he faces that suffering, Yes. And therefore doesn't deceive himself. Yes. Hmm? Then <clears throat> there is a certain kind of energy. Yes. Now why let's come to why the young man would have suffered, you see, if he didn't deceive himself. So I understand why somebody who deceives himself would suffer. I understand. That's understood. He suffered physically. Yes, apparently. because he'd been ill. Be- and also, all this Kundalini business was physical suffering. Yes. Hmm? Then what's the question? Well, I'm trying to find why, uh, yes, was that the origin of the suffering? Physical suffering? Yes. I, I think so. Yes, and, and therefore the, the energy was released because he uh, stayed with the physical suffering and did not escape psychologically. Right? Yes, right? that's right. That's part of it, that's part, part of, of it, it. Yeah. part of it. <coughs> so, 
So what next? Yes, I think we have... Uh... You see, sir, I don't know. To me, all this is so simple. Uh-huh. <laughs> because I think when you see truth and act, everything becomes logical. Yes, well, you did raise the question, what is it that sees... Yes, what is it that sees? Yes, sees this whole... Uh, how does thought become aware? You see, see, we were discussing last time, or even this time also, that the thought becoming consciously aware will, of its incorrectness, will behave differently. Yes, yes. Now, but what is it that... No, wait a minute, sir. Yes. He sees truth past his land. Sees it. And he comes and tells you. Yes. What he has seen. Which is the expression of what he has seen through thought and word. Hmm? Yes. What he has seen is not the word, nor the thought, I, and... Yes, I mean, it, communi- it may communicate a similar yeah. perception. Yes, right? yes. But it may not. Yes. Right. If it does... Com- but now there also may be a resistance to this perception in thought. You see, let's say that most people who heard this either didn't understand or rejected it or... Uh, ah, yes, of course, of course. Yes, now... Uh, because in him, in that chap, there was no resistance. Yes. He saw it, and he said, Yes, but now well, we have to consider the person who has resistance. Then he, then he says, oh, I uh, must have... reject it. He rejects it. Yes, but now since the whole world has resistance and this... So uh, they reject it. Yes, but then his, the question is, is there a way beyond this resistance? If you, if I resist what yes. you are saying, what can you do with me? Nothing, you see, but... The only question is whether you can uh, try another minute, communication. I'm not sure. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can try another communication. No, wait a minute. You say to me, Yes. Truth is a powerful slam. Yes. And I'm attached to my guru. Well, I you're must, basically but, attached to what's false. You're what is of, false? Yes, yes afraid, right. of, afraid of it. Yes. Bas- but what you have said, which is truth, Yes. has entered my consciousness. Yes. Hmm? As it is a seed that's operating in me. Yes, but... And that seed is going to do something. Yeah, it may do something. I know. But I mean, but are you saying that everybody who hears this, it's going to do something? Must. It must. I mean, that's the way you you feel. Uh, Like Lenin said something, it has affected the world. Yes, but... The effect was not exactly. What no, 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 I no of course not. I mean, that's a he's a I mean, he, he human being says insect, yeah. mm-hmm. and so on, so on. I mean, <coughs> if the, that's it, if the seed of truth is planted in me, because you have said it, it must operate. It must grow. It must function. It must. It has a life of its own. Well, and how do you, I mean, we have to understand some things. You see that, say, many millions of people may have read or heard what you say. Yeah. And it may seem that a large number of them haven't understood. Now, do no, you feel but that it, they, it's going on. They're worried about on. it. They're saying, what does he mean by this? Yes. They're still, it's functioning, it's mm. growing. It isn't dead. Mm. So, you can operate something false, and you can say something falls, and that operates too. Yes. But now we have a struggle between those two. That's you see. yes, did. But uh, and uh, we cannot foresee. It. Can you uh, the outcome of the struggle? Yeah, of course. I mean, therefore, we can't be sure of this outcome. Yes, I just made. Just right. made. You plant in me the seed that truth. Truth is a pastor's land. He comes along and plants in my consciousness the seed, a seed that says, "There is a way to truth." There is a way to truth. Yes. Follow me. Yes. <laughs> now both are, both are one is false, one is true. 
my that is embedded in my consciousness. So, in that, there is struggle going on. Now, what is true? What is false? What is, so the things are operating, which causes more confusion, yes, more misery, hmm? and a great deal of suffering. If I am, if I am sensitive enough, yes. That suffering, if I don't escape from it, uh-huh. what takes place? Yes, if you don't escape, then it's clear what will take place. I mean, then you will have the energy to see what is true, you see. But, right. but now, let's take the people who do escape, who seem to be in a large number. They outnumber quite right, yeah. millions out. So, but still the struggle is going on inside. Yes, but creating confusion. Confusion. That's what they're all doing. Yes. But then we don't know the outcome of that. Uh, oh yes, we do. What? <laughs> Dictatorship. <laughs> yes, I know. It gets worse. Yeah. Deterioration. Yes. yes, but now we want to get it clear. Let's say in a few people who face the suffering, the energy comes to, uh, you know, you know, to perceive the truth, right? Yes. And then the large number uh, who escape it, does, you know, it gets worse. But, and they rule the world. They rule the world. Now, what? What is the way out of that? And so, they say there is no answer to that. Mm. So, get away from it. Well, that also won't do, yes. Well, so, the people have. I know, yes. They say you can't solve this problem. Go away into the mountains or join, become a monk. That doesn't solve this. No. I mean, all that one can do is go on shouting. Yes, but I mean, then we have to say we don't know the outcome. Of of the shouting. <laughs> no, of, of the whole. If you shout in order to get an outcome, yes, it is not the right kind yes. of shouting. Right. <laughs> yes, I mean, that, that's the situation. Yeah. You just talk, you just point out that nobody wants to pay attention. It's their business. You just go on. Uh-huh. No, I would like to get some further along. Yes. I see now that we see this very clearly. You see, there is a mystery. I won't get back to that, if you don't mind. Thought cannot touch it, and so on, so on. That's simple enough. What? What's the point of it? Of what the mystery? Mm. Well, uh, I think the point you could—it's very hard to put it—but you could see it like this: that uh, if you look into the field of thought and reason and so on, and you see, finally, it has no clear foundation. It dissolves away the borders. Therefore, you say that uh, what is must be beyond that. You see, what is uh, is the mystery, right? I understand all that. Uh, I mean, you can't live in the uh, in this field of uh, reality and thought. Yes. Because of all that we said. I live in the field of reality. Yeah. That's my life. Yes. There I've, I'm, co- I'm consciously aware and struggle and keep going in that field. And I can never touch that. Yes. It's not I can touch you. There's no I to touch it when you really touch it. And you say to me, there is a mystery. Which passes all understanding. Ah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I am caught in this, 
I'd like to get that. I'm using all the I like I like when you say there is a mystery because to you it's a actuality, not an invention, not a superstition, not a self-deceived um, and so on. It is a re- it is truth to you. And you impress that tremendously on me hmm? what you say. It's because when you say it, because your integrity is that. You point out to me. And I like to get it. Because I say Somehow I must get it. What, what is your responsibility to me? You understand my position, sir? You say words cannot touch it, thought cannot touch it, no action can touch it. Mm-hmm. Only the action of truth oh, perhaps it will give you a feeling of that. And I, because I am a miserable human being, I like to get some of that. And you say, truth is a pastoral land, don't follow anybody. Mm -hmm. And I am left. I I realise, I am consciously aware the limitation of thought and all the confusion, misery, logic, all the rest of it. I can't somehow get out of it. Is your compassion going to help me? You are compassionate because part of that extraordinary mystery is compassion. Will your compassion help me? Obviously not. So what am I to do? I have a consuming desire for that. And you say don't. Don't have any desire. You can't have that, it's into your personal property. So all that you say to me is put order in the field of reality. Yes. yes and stay in and, and not escape suffering. Huh? And not escape suffering. So put free order yeah. in the field of Then something will take place. If you really put order. And then you see me, it must be done instantly. Mm. There is no, order is not. (laughs) Or is that mystery, sir? Everybody knows. Knows in the sense, there is something mysterious. Not um, the desire that creates mysteries. There is something mysterious in life, apart from my suffering, apart from my death, apart from my jealousies, anxiety, and all. Apart from all that, one there is a feeling that there is a great mystery in life. Hmm? Is that it? That there is a mystery which each one knows? Well, I should think that in some sense everybody knows it, yes. Uh, probably one is born with that sense and you know, it gradually gets uh, dimmed through the conditioning. And he hasn't got the vitality uh. or the intensity to put away all that. Yeah. See, that's also that. <clears throat> that means there is always God within you. See, that's the danger of it. Oh, well, not not exactly that. No, but it's there's some sort of uh, 
you know, intimation left intimation. of this thing you see. It. You see, I think that you know, probably uh, uh, children have it more strongly when they're young. Do you think? Do you think the modern modern children have that? I don't know about them. You see, I, I mean, probably less. You see, uh, keeping a, you know, getting into a into the modern city must uh, oh. have a bad effect. Oh, you see, of you see uh, there are many things. One is lack of contact with nature. Nature. You see, I think any contact with nature gives that sense of mystery. Correct. If you look at the sky at night, for example, or mm -hmm. and. Uh, but you see. <clears throat> The scientists are explaining the stars. Yes, I understand that. And the Cousteau is explaining the ocean. Yeah. The, ocean. <laughs> <laughs> the ecologists are explaining. So everything is being explained away. Yes, well, that's uh, now that's part of it. Then uh, has created that sense that you know we could, in principle, know everything. You see. Uh, so knowledge is becoming the curse. Hmm. Um, she said, perception has nothing to do with knowledge. Hmm. Right? Truth yes. and knowledge don't go together. The yeah. knowledge has no, cannot contain the immensity of mystery. Yes, you see, I think if we start with a little child, he may place the mystery in some part that he doesn't know. You see, for example, some place he could put it at the bottom of the ocean or somewhere yeah, yeah, else, in, uh, yeah, outside, outside, far away mm, from where mm, he is, mm, and then mm, he learns, you know, people have been everywhere. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and uh, uh, therefore, the whole thing is, uh, you know. Uh, made to appear uh, non-existent. Yeah. Everything becomes so superficial. Quite, yes. Quite. Uh, that's the danger of our modern age, that uh, it gives the appearance, you know, some sort of appearance that we know more or less. We know everything. Everything. At least uh, yeah. we have a general idea of uh, the scheme, if not, not the details, you see. Uh, the other night I was listening to Bronowski. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, several nights have been listening yes, to yeah. Ascent of Man. He explains everything. Hmm. Yes. Uh, so the explanations are are becoming my. You my see, the, the original yeah. impulse was to penetrate into this mystery. That was the impulse of science. Science, quite right. And. And somehow it has been diverted and gone astray, you see, to give the appearance of explaining it. So, if I may ask something directly, I hope you don't mind. Being a scientist, trained all the rest of it, in talking, do you get the feeling of this mystery? Well, I think so, yes, I've, uh, but I think I've always had some of that, you see. Yes. No, 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 I yeah. know. But in talking now, do you get a more intensity of it? Not because I feel intense, you follow, that's, mm -hmm. that's totally different thing. That then becomes influence and all that silly nonsense. But. In talking about something, we open a door. Yes. Yes. Well, see, I think that uh, you know that my particular conditioning is you know has a great deal to uh, resist uh, this notion of mystery. Of course. <laughs> Although, uh, you know, I, I think that you know, science is now going in the wrong direction. But but even the scientists admit something of the mystery. Yeah, to some extent, you see. But yeah. the, the general view is that that could be eventually cleared up, you see. In other words... Uh, oh, yes, quite, quite, quite. <laughs> cleared up in the sense, explain it explained, away. Explained, yeah. Yes. Now, I mean, since uh, 
my own feeling is, you know, that every particular scientific explanation will be a certain part of this field of reality, and therefore will not uh, clear away this mystery. No, no. Uh, no. No, but it clears it away because I listen to you explaining everything, yeah. and I'm just saying it's, it's nothing. Yes, well, that's what the main point of distinguishing between truth and reality. Yeah. Then you see, because yeah. we could say but in the field of reality, we may explain yeah. more and more broadly, yeah. uh, no, without limit. You see, in other see, words, what the communists, I mean, the yeah. present-day communists, that's what they're doing. Yes, well, not really the, the... Who do you say? The communists? Communists. Well, not only the communists. Of course, well, I mean, of course. I'm taking that. Yes, you but see, uh, I think, you see, you can say that anything in the field of reality can be explained, you see. We can penetrate more deeply and broadly, and there's limitless progress possible there. But uh, the essence is not explained, you see. That's, you know, in other words... Uh, no, I'm asking a different question, sir. I'm asking you, in talking yes. like this, though you have an intimation of that mystery, being a scientist, serious and all the rest of it, you had an intimation, perhaps long ago. In talking now, <coughs> do you It's no longer an intimation, but a truth. <laughs> Sorry to corner you. Well, yes, it is a truth. It's mm. not... So it's no longer an intimation. No, I think it's been a truth for a while, in fact, you see, because it's uh, implied in what we've been doing here. Yes, quite, quite. You see, now oh, something interesting. Being, how shall we say, the truth of that mystery makes the mind completely empty. Just a minute. Huh? Completely, it's like something silent. It's completely silent. Or because it is silent, it sees it. Not see, it's aware of it. It's, it they, they, because it is silent, the truth of that mystery is. I don't know if I'm conveying anything. When the mind is completely silent, not induced, not meditated upon, predator, you follow all that, when it is, because it, it has put order in, <laughs> in reality, therefore it is free from, the, from that confusion. <clears throat> there is a certain certain silence, but that silence is not real silence, because it's just it's moving away from confusion, but there's not silence. Realizing that, that is not silence, and not moving away from that realization, okay, am I conveying something? Yeah in the sense, realizing that and st staying there, saying, this is not real silence, which means negating that which, he, which order has produced. Yes, I mean, I say what, you say first you produce order, now, why is it necessary to produce the order first and then because negate it? obviously, otherwise it's like... Yeah, all right, yes. Yeah. So first you produce the order, then you negate. 
No, Lewd. negate the, the silence, silence which is in that order. On that order. Right. Because when I have no uh, disorder, uh, there is certain mathematical order, and out of, because of that order, my mind is quiet. Now, wait a minute. You say that's not a true silence. No. No. Uh, realizing that is not true silence, yes. I negate yes. the false silence for the moment. So, in the, neg- in the negation of that silence, I don't, I don't have any other silence. I don't want any other silence. Yes. There is no movement for greater silence. Would, would that be right? Yes. Then, that total silence is, I don't know, is, opens the door to that. That is, the, when the mind is, with all the control, is nothing, not a thing. Then there is pro- then perhaps there is the other. So you are coming to sound. Yes. You better stop now. Yes. Can we have some more? Yes, that would be good. I mean, what what do you suggest? We'll see. We, we'll see when we get there. Mm. Yes. Well, I, no, I think that we. No, we must continue. We must continue. We've got some. So somewhere. could we continue mm. by taking uh, actualities one after the other? What do we mean by actualities? Actuality in the field of reality. <laughs> I mean, in, yeah. yeah, sorry. Suffering. Yeah. Death. Not really go into it very, very deeply. Mm. Fear. 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 You know, various yeah. things. And take, penetrate as deeply as we can. Would that be worthwhile? Well, we could try that, yes. Huh? Mm-hmm. We can do that. To, You see, if we could, you and I only, or do you want anybody else? Well, it might be easier if we were only us. You and I? Yes. Correct. Would you you like to come, sir? Maybe Sissy about it. Oh. What? Oh, I don't know. Oh, well. Maybe maybe just sit. Oh, yes, of course. I don't care. It's up to you. Maybe it's up to you. Well, maybe we'll decide it later. Well, mm-hmm. when we talk it over, we need no other participants. Huh? We need no other participants. Exactly. Yeah, I mean no other participants. Oh, yes. yes. Like, yes. Just like just now, you mean. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We, we do parties and get married. I had an invitation. I must tell him about that. You, have you talked, Bohm, about New York? So it would you? Oh, the switch it off so it's not worth it.